is the Cleveland Browns, which probably doesn't come as a surprise <laughs> to like a lot of you. I mean, I yeah. agree with you that that they are due for a big offensive turnaround. I don't agree with you a hundred percent. I don't think you're crazy or anything. I don't agree with you a hundred percent that they are flying under the radar. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that they're kind of like a sexy, uh, or or are going to develop into kind of like a sexy team to like play uh, hold out get Tyrod Taylor oh Josh Gordon oh I mean I don't know I mean maybe we're going to be responsible for that because like we're cer- <laughs> we're certainly putting this out there um, but let's talk a little bit about the Browns because I agree with you that they are definitely uh, you know on the track to a serious offensive turnaround uh, they were last in the league we talked about the Giants being second to last in the league in points last year well they were better than the Browns the Browns averaged 14.6 <laughs> points a game point so I mean you know if they scored two touchdowns that's that's right where they were going to fall in. Um, yeah. More likely, though, with them, like five field goals, something like that. Exactly. They will be a top 10 <laughs> offense in 2018. The Wolf has been shouting from the mountaintops. Um, I mean, we've got big value at quarterback. we got big potential value at wide receiver. I'm not exactly sure how Landry's going to fit in here, but, I mean, he's certainly a good receiver, and he's yeah. going to be the number two guy. And, I mean, you've been projecting eventual upside from the backfield, and, and you like uh, the you like the price of Chubb. I remember I said I was probably not going to be in the Chubb market, and somebody on YouTube called me an asswipe. Asswipe um, moron. Let's be specific here. <laughs> well, I was, I was trying to save a little face. Um, <laughs> but anyway, talk to us a little bit about the Browns. I'm assuming you're probably going to start with Todd Haley. Of course, you got to start at the top of the coaching, and you get a marked play calling upgrade when you go from Hugh Jackson to Todd Haley, one of the brightest offensive minds in football. I know we did the coaching carousel the last couple of weeks. We talked about him two episodes back, ffbdpod.com slash 22, if you want to hear more on Todd Haley and some other coaches. Uh, but ultimately, again, to repeat some of those stats, Steelers were top 10 in total points, top 7 in overall yardage, top 5 in passing yardage the last four years. They haven't been outside the top 10 in points over that span. Man. Haley's averaged 24.4 points per game over his nine seasons calling plays. And the only time below those 20 points was when he was with the Kansas City with some pretty awful, you know, Matt Castle as your quarterback, uh, you know, horrendous talent like that and he wasn't even calling the plays for two of those three seasons so I mean it ultimately kind of easy to forgive him for some of those awful attacks and he still milked the most out of you know Jamal Charles and some of the rushing games Thomas Jones they, they led the league in rushing so they still put a competent offense out there even the, despite lacking talent so the guy knows what he's doing as an offensive coordinator which is a lot more than you can say about Hugh Jacks in these last few years uh, so you add him in there then you get this influx of talent especially at quarterback nothing's more important for an offensive talent turnaround than a quarterback and I still firmly believe Tyrod Taylor is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the NFL he dragged a hapless Bills team to the playoffs last year um, and, and I think he's uh, QB, pretty, QB 27 correct ranked, on the, ranked at QB 27 right that, now that's just stupid it's just, just so, so dumb like I and cannot no, even I might even you might even be a little low on him when you got him at 15 I have him at QB 15, and if you guaranteed me a 16-game season, I'd put him right back up. At, I had him at QB 11 before uh, Baker Mayfield was drafted. So, I mean, I, I think this guy's upside's completely out of this world. you got the rushing stats, which Haley will definitely utilize. He plays to his players' strengths. you got a great deep arm with Josh Gordon, perhaps the best deep strider in the NFL right now uh, in terms of being able to just change directions on a dime, kind of that deceptive Randy Moss speed. He's going to just he, – if Tyron Taylor can drop it into Sammy Watkins, basket and have that guy rack up a thousand yards and 10 TDs in only 14 games. Just imagine what Josh Gordon's going to do with this guy at, at quarterback. So Tyrod Taylor, huge value. We just talked about Josh Gordon. He's going as the wide receiver 17, 37th overall. I am at wide receiver 12, 27 overall. So almost a full round. Uh, I would take him earlier than what he's going right now. And I think that could still be – I mean, this guy could lead the league in receiving this year, which is just insane to think about. But Todd Haley, former wide receivers coach, bread and butter making Antonio Brown a complete stud. Larry Fitzgerald had some of his best seasons under this guy. Obviously two elite talents, but – Josh Gordon physically is right on that level with these guys. Now he's going to have the best type of coaching, the intricacies of the position. A guy that Jarvis Landry, who we'll talk about in a second, has been calling unstoppable. The size, says Jarvis Landry, that this guy has and his ability to get in and out of his cuts. I think it's one of the most impressive things I've recognized and noticed. Uh, The more he continues to hone and grow with these skills as far as his route running, the kid's going to be unstoppable is what his receiving mate says. And Jarvis Landry, I know you asked, what do I expect of that guy? What's going to happen with him? 
I think both guys are threats. I have an article on the site right now to top a thousand yards. In fact, I, I'm going to say both will top a thousand yards. This is a guy, Todd Haley, who had Larry Fitz, Anquan Bolden, and Steve Breston, some random creature, top a thousand yard, three one thousand yard receivers under his watch. You tell me you can't make two of the top talents uh, top a thousand yards here. Jarvis Landry again, a, di- a different receiver than Josh Gordon as well, which I think complements each other very well. More of an intermediate, short range guy running back with the ball in his hands, like we said about DJ Moore. No one embodies that more than Jarvis Landry looking for contact, running hard. You can put him in the backfield. You can put him in the slot. You can put him outside. Just a complete all over the place mismatch nightmare Jarvis Landry is. I think he easily tops a thousand yards. I think Josh Gordon again tops a thousand yards. Both of these receivers end up panning out huge. I have Landry ranked kind of where he goes already. He's the wide receiver 22 51st overall. It's kind of right where I have him. And I think he could end up being a huge value there still too. If he tops a thousand yards, scored nine touchdowns last year, really added to his red zone repertoire. Just a lot to love from both receivers, especially under a guy like Todd Haley. And, with Todd, and, and Tyler Taylor's got to be the best quarterback both of them have ever had thrown to them, I imagine. Uh, I think that's probably true. And, you know, Ooh, I just want to reiterate I'm, again, running back 20 or quarterback 27 is just crazy. That's, that's okay? the insane I mean, guy. it's that's just, last year it's just like, crazy. Like, I, I had the list in front of me of the guys that were – Going ahead of him, I guarantee you, ten of them would just make us laugh out loud. Uh, you want you uh, want to puke real quick? Do you want? Sure. <laughs> fire, let, let me just run fire, you, why don't you fire off a couple. I mean, you know, we're we're kind of preaching to the choir, talking to each other about this, but uh, you know, yeah. sometimes that's fun. Go ahead. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we got Baker Mayfield, his own running mate, going ahead of him that's, right now. That's for, crazy. I, there's but, a you know. I mean, when you oh. said um, Tyrod, if you could guarantee 16 games out of him, he'd be even higher. You can't guarantee 16 games out of anybody, but I, I think if he loses this job, it's going to be due to injury. I, I mean, yeah. I, I don't even think the plan is probably to play Mayfield this year if they can help it. Obviously, they they brought Tyrod in. They're hoping he has a good season. He's a he's a good quarterback. Could he fall on his face? Yeah, I guess it's possible. But putting Mayfield ahead of him when Tyrod is the clear starter is just stupid. Dak Prescott? I mean, who the hell's Dak Prescott? We just talked about Blaine Jarwin well, might become his most reliable target. Like, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're telling me Josh Gordon and Jarvis Landry aren't better targets than what Dak Prescott's thrown to? What is it, Alan Ernst Alan and Blaine Ernst. Jarwin? Yeah. <laughs> of, of the you know, potted plants in the clubs. Yeah, exactly. Hiding behind the potted plants. Even, you know, Derek Carr's going above him. For uh, her game back to 1998 and play smash mouth football back. Uh, in, what the hell is going on there? Matt Ryan, I would even say, is shouldn't be higher than than Tyrod Taylor at this stage. So yeah, Falcons, uh, people do love to place. blow smoke up the Falcons' ass, don't they? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Alex Smith going like 70 picks above Tyrod Taylor. What is what is that? You know, that's just stupid. I, it's stupid. I mean, and so, you know, don't buy in, folks. I'm, I'm not saying that Tyrod's going to be like, a, you know, QB three or something like that. But QB 27 is just dumb. I mean, that means that if you are in a 14 team league. He wouldn't even maybe he'd barely be worthy of being a backup. That's just I know. that's just crazy. It's just crazy. He's a low and, end. He's a low end starter, in my opinion. And and you said you know QB three is insane. Probably not going to get that high. No, when you of got course not. Aaron I mean, Rodgers, Deshaun Watson. But think this guy only a couple seasons ago with marginal talent to throw to at best with the Bills was the QB eight for two straight seasons. So I mean, <laughs> this guy has gotten it done at a QB one level with a whole lot less to throw to. So I, I totally love the value there. I love the value with the receivers. I don't know if I love the running backs quite yet. I mean, it's just like a, it, I know I've been called a moronic asswipe for not buying yeah. all in on Chubb, but I'm going to push back. And this just has committee written all over it. There, there's like two established pretty good NFL running backs there. And, and then Chubb, if you like Chubb, OK. I mean, do you like him so much that he's just going to become a workhorse back at the expense of these two guys? That's crazy. He's not going to be. I mean, I, who are you going to start if you get these guys? Yeah, exactly. You know, Hyde seems like he's going to be the early season starter, like you said, but locked into a committee. He's the most expensive at 78 overall, RB31. His upside is a three-headed committee. I don't love that. I think the upside lies here with Hyde getting hurt, as he often always Mm -hmm. does, and then Chubb becoming the clear locked-in early down guy, Johnson becoming the clear receiving guy. Uh, You know, Haley has come out and said – 
I'm open to a workhorse emerging and riding him. Obviously, I did that with Le'Veon Bell, but I also had a three-headed horse in in the Chiefs situation when I had Jamal Charles and I had Thomas Jones, and we led the league in uh, rushing that year. So I'm also not afraid to ride a committee either. So he hasn't offered any clarity as to what this is going to be. It is going to be a committee. I would agree with you uh, based on those comments. So I'll go with the value there. I'll go with the guy going 110 overall, which is yeah. Nick Chubb, RB42. And, and, you know, Duke Johnson – Obviously, he's been a PPR monster, RB13 last year in PPR leagues. But when you add in Jarvis Landry and a very similar skill set there with the intermediate games, those routes, who are you going to really throw to? If you have one of the best receivers at that range in Jarvis Landry or Duke Johnson, I'm going Jarvis Landry every single time. And plus, you talk about tight ends then. David Yoku, this athletic freak, is also sitting there. Uh, and, you know, over 11 years of play calling, Todd Haley's never really utilized a tight end other than one time Heath Miller had like eight touchdowns and 700 yards or so and that was a the monstrous ceiling for a Todd Haley uh tight end there so I don't love Nyoku as much as a lot of these people are putting him at but the guy has been training his absolute ass off all offseason really refining that raw upside 4 6 4 40 6 4 250 pounds and moves that well and and you're talking about doing toe drag and catches and whatnot a guy like Todd Haley does know how to use talent even if historically you know you're talking about one out of 11 tight ends have actually been legitimately a fantasy starter probably not working in David Yoku's favor but there is some raw athleticism and just the touchdown upside could be high when you got that much size that much speed and body control there really could be 10 touchdown upside so when you look at that somebody's taking a hit here my guess is going to be the, the running back position in terms of pass catching I, I just don't like Duke Johnson at all in this setup as of right now yeah, I agree with your assessment. I'm not touching any of these guys, I don't think. But if I were going to grab one, like I said, and this is what I got called out for, I would uh, wait on Chubb to not do anything for a few weeks because I don't think he will. And I would either try to pick him up on waivers or get him on the cheap from somebody. 